Welcome to TSAT. <coughs> Today, I am going to discuss about biofuels. So, before getting into the content, we need to know what a biofuel is and we must be able to differentiate uh, between biofuels and uh, fossil fuels. So, in this context, biofuel is a fuel which has been extracted from the contemporary living organisms, it can be from plants or animals or microorganisms. So, Contemporary means from the existing living beings, biofuels which are been derived from the existing living beings. We are extracting the fuels from the living beings traditionally and also in terms of modern terms. So, how is this process uh, of extraction of fuels, uh, biofuels different from traditional mode of extraction to modern mode of extraction of biofuels? Traditionally, since age old, we are using firewood. Uh, as a fuel for different purposes and we are using cow dung which is a biofuel derived from the animals. So, uh, these are derived from the existing contemporary living beings when uh, uh, relatively compared with fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are fuels which are being produced in the geological past because of geological processes in the earth's interior in a certain depth in the layer of the soils. So, it takes for about certain millions of years for the conversion of fossil fuels from the buried uh, sedimentary rocks uh, from which uh, fossil fuels have been formed by the degradation of uh, living beings which have been buried in the geological past are fossil fuels. Biofuels are contemporary fuels which have been extracted from the existing living beings. That is a fundamental difference between a biofuel and a fossil fuel. In modern terms, uh, biofuels are extracted uh, from uh, the existing uh, contemporary living beings through different processes. So, the different processes through which uh, biofuels have been extracted are for example, uh, fermentation is a process. In the fermentation process, what happens is uh, some carbohydrates, any kind of carbohydrate might be a simple carbohydrate or a complex carbohydrate can be a simple carb carbohydrate like a glucose or a fructose or sucrose can be used to degrade or ferment to generate alcohols or even a complex carbohydrate like cellulose can also be subjected to fermentation process for the generation of alcohols. So, these alcohols can be used as an additive to petrol. So, or sometimes can be directly used complete um, alcohol can be directly used uh, instead of petrol. So, uh, this is a classic example of biofuel which has been derived from the process of fermentation. The other process in the modern terms which has been used to generate biofuels is uh, trans -esterification. Through the process of trans -esterification of oils, biodiesels are being produced. So, through the process of fermentation, alcohols are being produced. Through the process of trans esterification, biodiesel has been produced. So, here in this process, what is happening is uh, this uh, whether it is an alcohol or whether it is uh, a biodiesel is the resultant of uh, photosynthesis. So, the oils which are being stored in the plants is the resultant of photosynthesis. The alcohol which is stored, the alcohol which is uh, which is prepared through the process of fermentation is the raw material here is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are also being generated because of photosynthesis. So, whether it is an alcohol or a biodiesel is the resultant of photosynthesis that we need to keep in mind. So, in this process, we need to understand after understanding what biofuel is, let us discuss what biofuel is. So, biofuel uh, is a fuel that is produced through contemporary biological processes such as agriculture and anaerobic digestion. So, anaerobic uh, digestion for example, fermentation is a classic example of anaerobic uh, digestion. In the, in the process of fermentation, the carbohydrates are converted into alcohols by releasing carbon dioxide with the help of uh, certain bacteria and yeast. So, biofuel uh, is a fuel which has been generated from the contemporary living organisms which is not produced from the from the geological processes in the past. So, biofuels can be 
derived directly from plants or indirectly from agriculture, agricultural, commercial, domestic and or industrial ways. Renewable biofuels generally involve uh, contemporary carbon fixation such as those that occur in plant or microalgae through the process of photosynthesis. So, for th these are the products produced through the process. The basic fundamental process is photosynthesis. For example, industrial waste, for example, molasses is an industrial waste. A byproduct of sugarcane industry, which can be used to generate alcohol or bagasse is an industrial waste, a pulp left over after the extraction of uh, uh, juice from the sugar cane is bagasse. So, the bagasse can be directly used as a source to uh, burn and generate uh, power. So, here in this case, uh, but in the case of sugar industries, sugar industries will have a captive power plants means they have their own power generation units by burning bagasse which is a pulp left over from the sugar cane after extracting uh, juice for manufacturing sugar. This pulp is being burned directly to generate power is a waste product of uh, or a byproduct of uh, industrial waste is a classic example. Other renewable biofuels are made through the use of conversion of biomass. So, you are converting here the biomass re refers referring to recently living organisms most often refer to plants or plant derived materials. So, you are converting biomass. So, what do you mean by biomass? Biomass is the material with which the living organisms are made up of the mass with which the plant material with which uh, a plant is made up of or an animal or uh, with which a certain material with which it an animal is made up of is known as biomass. So, bio means life, mass. So, the living beings with which uh, they are made up of is biomass. So, with this biomass fuels are being made. So, the biomass can be converted to convenient energy containing substances in three different ways. So, through certain processes like thermal conversion, chemical conversion and biochemical conversion. So, here in the case of thermal conversion, when you are applying heat, when you are able to convert a substance into fuel is known as thermal conversion. For example, in transesterification, oils which are being extracted from the plants are being subjected to high heat and pressure. In this process, oils in general have high viscosity and high flash point. So, when the viscosity of the oil and the flash point is being decreased, oils can be used as fuels. Flash point is the temperature at which a fuel catches fire. So, a, fi a good fuel is one which catches fire at low temperature. So, what we are doing is for these conditions to remove the viscosity and to decrease the decrease the flash point, we subject uh, the oils to trans esterification process that is to high temperature and pressure conditions so that uh, the oils convert into biodiesels which can be used as a diesel additive is an example of thermal conversion. For example, in the case of biochemical conversion, for example, biochemical conversion means there are certain biological processes or microorganisms involved in the ma in the in the manufacturing of a, a fuel is known as biochemical conversion the classic example is fermentation the fermentation process requires microorganisms like yeast and bacteria converts uh, converts carbohydrates to alcohol alcohol is a fuel which can be used in uh, petrol additive so recently why this is in use because because it is being made mandatory that uh, the petrol which we are using uh, is an uh, ethanol additive, a 10 percentage of uh, the petrol being used is mixed with alcohol, a variant of alcohol known as ethanol. So, based upon the kind of raw material which you are using uh, to produce uh, alcohol, any kind of carbohydrate can be used like a simple carbohydrate like glucose or fructose or sucrose or starch or cellulose. The cellulose is the most complex carbohydrate and the glucose is the most simplest carbohydrate. So, any type of carbohydrate can be used here. So, in this process, uh, 
the this biomass conversion can result in fuels like solids liquids or gas formation for example um, firewood is a solid biofuel alcohol is a liquid biofuel biodiesel is a liquid biofuel gobar gas is a gobar gas is a example of a, a biofuel which is in a gaseous state and the gas which is uh, extracted from the degrading organic matter collected from the domestic waste or vegetable markets the garbage been collected can be used to generate a natural gas or no uh, biogas rather than natural gas is fossil fuel biogas is de degraded through the process of uh, the contemporary organic matter both in the case of natural gas which is a fossil fuel and a biogas uh, which is a biofuel the composition is the same dominated by methane so these are the different variant types of uh, bio all fuels in terms of alcohols been produced through the process of fermentation so bioethanol is an alcohol so depending upon the kind of raw material been used for example um, you can use the waste from the vegetable market you can use a, a waste in the agricultural fields like hay or dry grass which is a, which is which is these days been considered as a waste after being harvesting any dry leaves after harvesting from uh, harvesting from the jowar or sugarcane or rice or wheat the waste material is cellulose the most complex carbohydrate can be fermented to generate uh, alcohols waste wood uh, the shed leaves uh, in the of the trees in the forest or in the shrubs can also be used as a, a raw material to generate alcohol in the process of their degradation even though these alcohols are poisonous for example methyl alcohol otherwise also known as wood alcohol even though it is considered poisonous for consumption even such kind of raw materials can be used to produce raw, produce alcohol because they are not used for consumption they are being used for the purpose of uh, fuel in automobile so even such grade of raw material can be used for uh, uh, can be used for fuels so that is the other advantage with bio fuels so other, when the different variant types of raw materials are varying the family of alcohols been produced like ethanol propanol butanol these are different variant kinds of alcohols been produced which can be used as fuels which are been produced depending upon the kind of uh, raw materials which we are using so what are these different kinds of raw materials uh, uh, with the change in the technology and technological evolution uh, there are different kinds of raw materials being used so in the first stage biofuels uh, because of the low technology and low innovation we have only technology where food grade a uh, food grade uh, carbohydrates are being used in the production of alcohols but in a country like india using food grade uh, material to generate alcohol uh, cannot be accepted because because there is huge demand for food because of the exploding population where you need to feed more than 1.4 billion population so in this context uh, the first generation biofuels have been criticized because the raw material is a food grade raw material so mostly from carbohydrates production such as sugar or starch crops such as corn a uh, sugar cane or sweet sorghum uh, are the first generation uh, raw materials uh, which are not accepted to a country like india the second generation uh, uh, biofuels are lignocellulosic biomass so here in this case of this uh, lignocellulosic biomass as i have mentioned lignin and cellulose uh, are the components which are present in uh, wood and shed leaves which are considered to be waste so but it is containing a complex carbohydrate which can be fermented to generate uh, methyl alcohols which can be used as fuels even though it is uh, poisonous for consumption so such as trees and grass is also being deposited as a feed stock for ethanol production so which is used as a gasoline additive the countries which are using these as a gasoline additive are united states and brazil they have gone to the extent of mixing uh, these biofuels to the extent of 50% we are 
right now we are at 10 percentage our plan by 2024-25 is to get, uh, get or we our plan is to add 20 percentage of uh, our biofuels into this uh, uh, fossil fuel so that uh, what the advantage with this is biofuels act as import substitution import substitution means we are dependent upon imported petroleum for about 80 percentage of the petroleum essential in our economy is being imported so when you are substituting biofuels the advantage you have got is you can save the foreign exchange reserves you are becoming self-reliant because of which your economy becomes stable so the dependency on other countries decreases so when you are adding 20 percentage means 20 percentage of the fossil fuel which is being imported can be reduced so uh, you are generating fuels indigenously and the pollutants being released by these biofuels relatively compared with uh, fossil fuels is less low carbon footprint self-reliance and you will be able to save more foreign exchange reserves so that your economy will be stable and it creates employment to people uh, who are not skilled because you can cultivate certain plants which uh, which generate oils like jethropa or castor oil which doesn't require any kind of technical skill set so it is creating a kind of employment to people who are not uh, skilled uh, that is the other advantage with these kind of biofuels so biofuels can be used as fuels for vehicles in its pure form so it is used as a diesel additive to reduce the level of uh, particulate, uh, particulate and carbon monoxide and uh, hydrocarbons so what is happening is as i have already mentioned that the amount of uh, uh, pollutants being released from the biofuels relatively compared with fossil fuels is less and this is another process apart from uh, fermentation the trans esterification process which i have mentioned in terms of producing bio diesel so in this uh, production there are certain issues involved so there are certain advantages as i have mentioned there are certain disadvantages so the other uh, an advantages factor for example when there is an import substitution when there is indigenous production of a fuel what happens is even though there are fluctuations of prices in the fluctuation of prices in the international market it doesn't impact your economy because the reason behind it is this fuel is been indigenously be generated in your domestic economy so the fluctuations happening in the international market for the crude oil will not impact you when you are self reliant and when a source is been produced indigenous so so your economy will not be impacted by the increasing in the price of crude oil petroleum in the international market the other disadvantage is food versus fuel problem so when you are using a, a food grade material for fuel generation is a criticism in a country like india other advantage is poverty reduction potential because it can give employment to unskilled labor it is an advantageous factor and carbon emission levels are less it is an advantageous factor sustainable biofuel production because uh, this is sustainable because as in the case of uh, fossil fuels they are not sustainable they cannot be reproduced again but in the case of biofuels you can cultivate crops and you can generate again and they are sustainable not only because there is consistency in terms of supply because you can cultivate they are sustainable because even the level of pollution is less the other criticism is there is possibility of deforestation for the cultivation of uh, certain few crops for biofuels may lead to soil erosion and some environmental impact like uh, reduction in biodiversity because you are cultivating only few species of crops so uh, impact on water resources so if you are cultivating few bio species the rate of percolation decreases the more the vegetation uh, in a catchment region more is the rate of percolation of uh, water increasing the groundwater level so the water resources might be impacted because uh, because because the biodiversity in terms of vegetation might be cleared to cultivate these uh, crops 
Next is rules, social exclusion and injustice. The fear is because of some uh, loopholes existing in the land, land legislation. Because majority of the land in the name of Benami is, is in the hands of landlords. Uh, how far these fruits can reach or percolate to the lower sections is a question, is a criticism. So, in this process, in the case of first generation biofuels, because of low technology, uh, food grade uh, biofuels like sugar, starch and vegetable oils are being used in the case of first generation biofuel technology. In the case of second generation biofuel technology, with the change in time, with the innovation of technology, we are able to adopt, uh, innovate a kind of technology where we are using uh, waste material as a raw material to generate biofuels that happen in the second stage. The raw materials are lignocellulosic biomass or wood which is a waste wood or shed leaves in the autumn etc. when the leaves are been shed or the agricultural waste, the hay which is left over after the cultivation of paddy or rice can also be used as raw material to generate alcohols like methyl alcohols, anethyl alcohols, propanols etc. In the case of third generation biofuels, we are using algae which contain 50 percentage of oil to generate a in the biodiesel. This algae can be cultivated with the sewage water after treatment. So, it, it is not uh, consuming water which is essential for irrigation or drinking purpose. It is consuming waste water. This is a third generation biofuels and the waste of after extracting oil, this algae uh, can also be used for uh, burning and generating energy. So, this is third generation biofuels, a variant of algae which has got certain oil, 50 percentage of oil which can be used to generate biodiesel through the process of esterification. So, in this case of uh, alcohol uh, manufacturing, this is how the fermentation process happens. The corn or any kind of, this is the example being given here is corn, any kind of starch, rice, wheat or uh, hay or lignocellulosic biomass or wood, it consists of carbohydrate. These are when they are being subjected to a fungus like yeast or any kind of bacteria degrades leading to fermentation. Fermentation process releases carbon dioxide which is an anaerobic process, water and ethanol, a class of uh, alcohol. So, depending upon the raw material which we use, the type of alcohol forms varies, so, ethyl alcohol, or methyl alcohol or propanol or butanol, whatever it is, varies depending upon the raw materials being used. These I have mentioned the different kinds of raw materials like even the hay, uh, the lignocellulosic biomass or the industrial uh, byproduct like molasses or bagasse or uh, uh, corn or sorghum or starch or any complex carbohydrate can be used. So, these are the examples of species of plants which can be cultivated even in a semi-arid region, which does not require any kind of uh, special skill sets, uh, which yields oils and these oils are not uh, consumable, not at the grade of consumption. These are, uh, uh, these can be used as biofuels. So, we have identified these crops in our region which can be cultivated in a semi-arid and arid regions uh, with the proper uh, agricultural plan. Uh, oils can be extracted. So, jetropa is one of such plant where uh, from the seeds of this jetropa which is prevalent in our plateau region and surrounding regions of uh, rural Telangana and many parts of India, where these uh, seeds contain oil and even castrol, most of the re uh, regions uh, where it is suffering with drought can be used to cultivate uh, uh, castrol. Uh, the oil which is not edible but can be used to generate biodiesel. The third species is Pongamia pinnata. This Pongamia pinnata oil is also not, uh, uh, is also oil which is not consumable. Locally we call it as Kanuga and the oil is been subjected to transesterification to generate bio diesels. So, unlike crop based biofuels does not entitle a decrease in food production since it requires neither farmland nor fresh water. So, what is happening in the case of these algae, it is not consuming any land nor it is consuming fresh water. So, it is the sea treated 
water is been supplied for the cultivation. In the case of fourth generation biofuels, uh, which are consuming non-arable land the, uh, through the process of trans esterification, which I have shown you, in the case of Jetropa or Castrol or Pangamea Pineta, uh, or the fourth generation biofuels, the biodiesel can be produced through trans esterification process. So, the different class of ethanols produced in this process of uh, uh, fermentation by using different variant types of uh, uh, raw materials like alcohols like ethanol, propanol, butanol, these are a class of uh, alcohols depending upon the type of uh, raw material being used. Uh, Biobutanol is also known as biobutanol because of the process of fermentation because living organisms like microorganisms like bacteria and yeast are being used in the process of uh, fermentation process. These are the different variant types of uh, biofuels and the advantage with biofuels is you become self-reliant, low pollution emission and they help in import substitution so that uh, your uh, foreign exchange reserves can be saved that those are the main advantages with the bio fields. So friends, in the next session we will be discussing some other topic in science and technology. Thank you.